Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode 29. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on this week's episode, New Bronco Rumors with Nashville Early Bronco. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to the You Can Man Show, where we believe what one man can do, you can do as well. We have a special guest on the show this week, John Melton with Nashville Early Bronco, on the show to talk about the new Ford Bronco and what Ford cannot screw up about this new Bronco. Or what they're going to screw up. So welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you. And John actually drove down from Nashville just for us. Yep. I'm kidding. He had a job here. <laughs> he's a videographer by trade. And so he had a job in Atlanta because he's super high in demand. Very. And he had a free night and he decided to come spend it with us. Welcome. So, a bunch of Bronco thanks, lovers. Guys. Yes. And I got to ride around in Tim's Bronco and it was yeah, pretty amazing. Go? It was good. It, you know, there's nothing more special than two guys just <laughs> there riding, really is. riding around in a Bronco <laughs> at, at, at night. night. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Top, Top down. Top off. Yeah. It was good. Okay. It was good. So. Plenty of bro time with Tim in the Bronco. <laughs> All yeah. right. I haven't ridden in the Bronco. What? What's going on with that, man? Uh, Ever? No. Really? That, yeah. I'm really Says sorry about, about that, the Punk, dude. I'm the only one at this table who doesn't own a Bronco. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's Ooh. pretty weak. You need oh, to yeah. step it up. Yeah, we didn't tell you about it. Yeah. yeah. Dave's Bronco. Uh, but yeah, I let John drive my Bronco as well. Oh, okay. So it, it was interesting because he has a 75 mm-hmm. with, with a C4 automatic transmission. And I was really interested to see what how it compared. So it was, I mean, we, we could seriously talk for like two hours Absolutely. about Broncos. That's what we're stuff. here for. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we're going to obviously get into John's YouTube stuff and everything that he's got going on with Nashville Early Bronco. But first, guys, anything exciting or new or anything happened this week that you guys want to talk about? I just came in from Long Island. Um for a big wedding weekend. New York, yay, yay, yeah. yay. So we had a long weekend on Long Island, and so I got the full... You were there for a wedding, right? For a wedding. It was, like, super beautiful, nice, like... I bet the weather is Oh, my gosh. 68 degrees, like, no humidity. Woo. I went for a run. I, I felt like I could just run forever nice. up there. It was flat and beautiful weather. So And you got to go fishing... Yeah, I went out on a boat that wasn't on a lake. It was my first time doing that. Um, Okay. So we went out in the uh, the Long Island Sound, I guess. I could see Connecticut from where I was. Nice. And uh, didn't get seasick. And we were on the the backside of Dorian. Like the morning we went out, we could see like the bands of Dorian like over the water. I'd have been chucking. There was like three or four foot swells, which felt big on the boat we were on. But no, no sickness. I hung in there, caught the biggest fish of the day. So nice. felt good about it. That was my weekend. Sweet. Yeah. All right, Dave. Yeah, I got a, um, I went back to REI, okay, for loyal listeners, everybody, <laughs> and, th- you know, two of you around this table know that I, I don't love, I love the store REI, but I don't like when I have to go check out because they always are like, they are have you, REI in Nashville. Yes. Are you? A, yeah. they, okay. So they always ask, are you a co-op member? I'm like, no, I'm not. And they're like, well, why not? Have you heard about it? I'm like, you yes. can save a thousand dollars. Yes, I've heard about it. And they're like, well, do you know about all the perks? I'm like, yes, I do. They're like, well, you know, it's for life. So, you know, do you want to? And I'm uh, every time I'm just like, no. So I go and I buy this hat. Right. And uh, on the hat, it says REI co-op. So I go up. And I'm like, hello, I would like to purchase this hat from you right now. And they're like, okay. And they said, are you an REI co-op member? I'm like, no, I'm not. I know about the program, but I'm not interested. (laughs) And they're like, well, do you know it's for life? I'm like, yes, I know it's for life. I don't want to be part of your club. I don't want to do it. But you wore it. Okay, hold on. So (laughs) the guy, he was like, okay, yeah, no problem. And so I'm I'm like sticking, you know, I get my card out. I'm swiping it. And he's got to just twist the knife. He goes, so you're going to wear the co-op hat. (laughs) But you're not going to join the him. co-op. Good no, not him. good for him. That's good for Listen, him. the customer's always right. No. Leave me alone. Let me give you my money. I want to buy my hat. I want to buy my cup that I'm buying. And I don't want to be pressured into if buying. He was, if he was a really good REI employee, he would have snatched that hat back from you. All right. Well, right. Listen, REI, you're on thin ice, okay, with me. All right. So just you've been you've been put on As notice. You wear Dave, that is seriously weird, though, that you <laughs> buy the hat. This is Especially REI. the yeah. REI co-op. Well, uh, uh, for, for hats for me, I'm not usually 
usually big on like, I got to be comfortable, but with a hat, it has to be comfortable for me to wear it. And this hat is very comfortable and you kind of can't read what it says. Yeah, I can't. It looks yeah. like PepsiCo. From you know here, what? Right? You can just take that hat back because John brought us. Nashville, he did. He's hooked, he hooked us up. He hooked Hats. us up. Yeah. Man. So that is sweet. That was I'm nice. going to go in there and I'm going to throw it down. You on the can ground. get your own at Nashville early Bronco dot com. That's right. Yes. Sweet. Um, right. Yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot to add. So I think we should get into it because I want to I want to have enough time to yes. talk about all this new Bronco stuff. Let's do it. OK, so first off, we want to talk about John and his projects and stuff. We always try to ask our guests. Where, since this is the You Can Man show, we're all about DIY stuff. Where are you on the DIY scale? Yeah, scale of one to 10. I'm a 10. Josh, he says he's a one to a two. So don't feel bad if you're I lower say on the scale. Whatever Dave is, I'm a little above. You can't um, be above a 10. <laughs> and it's not just automotive. This is kind of like all encompassing yep. house, yard, trucks. What? Yeah, just your shot in the dark, Man. zero to 10. It's hard. It's hard to rate yourself. It is hard because, like, I'm sure you guys would look at me, this uh, burly, strapping man in front of you, and you would say, "Oh, definitely, like maybe eleven. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, like he probably chews on wood outside <laughs> in the forest." But well, be like, honest, because we'll we'll know. I feel like I'm like a three. Okay, you know? because no. there are so many times that I come home and my wife is like. You didn't do this, so I had to, you know, fix the toilet. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm working for us with my hands and, you're and like, my creativity. You're like, but the Bronco. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. Car, I know cars. Right. So currently at our house, um, our bathroom, my, my wife and I's master bathroom tub leaks into our kitchen sink downstairs nice uh we it's are a water the, feature. yeah it's it's a nice water feature <laughs> we have mold growing on our siding okay and you're describing the, my house yeah the, the you know the faucet that or the uh, kitchen sink like has that little sprayer randomly it'll just spray you <laughs> and it's like not even a gag like yeah. i wish i had a video camera to just record it because it's like all of a sudden i'm like oh god so but that's what makes it home right, right. Exactly. But you, you, you probably could fix I it. I could fix it's, all it's, those things. It's, it's, re- it's, it's really time. just lazy. It yeah, is the yeah, time. It is. <laughs> and like then, uh, you know, I think about like, oh, I have a 23-gallon tank to install on my Bronco. I have a new radiator fan. I, you know, like I have all this stuff that it's like everything is waiting for me when I get home. And so I do nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so I hear you. Yeah. 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 We've had questions from listeners about that. I remember one guy was like, how in the world do you find time to do this? Yeah. And that's a major, that's yeah. a major. Yeah, thing. it's tough. So, Definitely yeah, tough. We feel you. We feel you. So tell us about your passions mm-hmm. for Broncos and the YouTube channel that you have, Nashville Early Broncos, yep. and how that got started, how long you've been doing it, all that good stuff. Yeah. So I bought my first Bronco. Uh, gosh, what year was it? I, I, I bought my first Bronco pretty early on in my wife and I's marriage. And it was pretty cool. Like we, if you've heard of Dave Ramsey, like we went through the whole Dave Ramsey thing and we got ourselves out of debt and we were doing a budget every month. And one of the things when you're doing a budget, it's like, Hey, we have money left over at the end of the month. Like, what are we going to do? And like, I mean, in premarital counseling, uh, you know, my wife and I are talking about, you know, what are the like non-negotiable, non-negotiables? And I was like, well, I'm going to own a Bronco. Wow. Got to. Yeah. yeah. For you. Nice. Like in premarital. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I want to travel to Africa. And I'm like, well, I'm going to own a Bronco. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank obviously. You. Yeah, we haven't gone to Africa yet. <laughs> um, and I've had, I have three Broncos. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but no, it was like, you know, we, uh, she knew that and so we go through the um dave ramsey stuff and we're budgeting and and we have money left over and my wife's like why don't you start saving for your bronco and i was like what yes who ma'am. are you yeah who seriously you? like that's the moment you know you married the perfect girl <laughs> and uh so yeah we started saving and and i got like a thousand dollars saved up and i found this piece of crap on craigslist that was turquoise it was a 66 it ran barely ran but it didn't stop like i loading it on the trailer i ended up buying it loading it on the trailer like i couldn't stop so like i had to hit the edge of the trailer and like (laughs) hope i didn't go over the edge 
And I was just in way over my head. And uh, so ended up, long story short, I sold that one. And but we kept saving. And so we saved for, I don't know, about another two or three years. Uh, I guess it was six years ago. And I found one, one came up on Craigslist in Nashville. And it was just it was, it was great for what I thought I wanted. And so I went and looked at it. It was in my price range, but it just, what did you, what did you pay for that Bronco? Well, so that one, the the one that I went to go look at was $5,000. It was a 351 Windsor. It was, um, but it, it like, it was, it was pretty rough. And, and I thought I wanted a rough Bronco. And uh, I'm looking at it and it's just like, man, I'm going to have the same problems I had with that 66. Yep. Like, uh, like there, you know, yes, you can do a lot, uh, you know, by watching YouTube videos, but also at the same time. You couldn't though, because you weren't, you, you I didn't wasn't making YouTube yet. videos. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm talking to this guy and, and I'm like, you know what? I, I just don't think I'm going to buy this one. And he goes, well, I've got this other one over here. And I turn around and it's like. It's the one that I bought and it was just like the beam of light was coming down and, you know, the angel choir was singing hallelujah. <laughs> like it was just perfect. So I paid $7,000 for it. And what year was it? It's a 75 and uh, it's a 302 C4. Or what year, sorry, what year did you buy it in? I bought it, so six years ago, so 2013. Okay. Um, That's honestly not a bad price No, at it, all. it really wasn't. It wasn't. And um, I drove, test drove it and it was pretty sketchy, like steering was all over the place, didn't have a whole lot of power, uh, hard to stop. But I was like, okay, these are things that I can fix. The body was in generally good shape. And so I got it home and all this time, I mentioned Dave Ramsey, I was also, I was leading the video team over at Dave Ramsey. So I was working there full time and, you know, I kind of got to the place where leading the team, I wasn't really doing anything creative anymore. And so I was just kind of sitting in meetings all day. And so I thought, man, what would be a cool way that I could kind of get back into my video skills? And I was like, I can make YouTube videos with my Bronco. You know, I went on online and no one was doing it. There were no Bronco videos. Like there's this awesome resource called classicbroncos.com that has like so many forum articles, but it's like, I would spend four hours just yeah. trying to figure out like how to do something because there was just so many articles and it was and so then, hard to navigate. So I've spent so much time on classic oh, broadcast. Yeah. 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 And then, th you know, the same goes for any old like totally. classic car. Some everybody's got that forum. Yep. And then when you're a noob, yeah. And you're trying to figure out something and then you ask the question and then the dude chimes yeah. in, uh -huh. do the search feature, yeah. bro. Yeah. And I'm like, the worst. Bro, there's so many articles about yeah. that. Yes. We've like, answered that question. And I'm like, yeah. name two. Yeah. Because <laughs> I could not find Can you post the link below, <laughs> please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was like, you know what? I could, I could do some YouTube videos and just do simple how-to installs and stuff like that. And one of the things that I love about video production is I'm able to take complex subjects and really break it down and make it simple for people like that. That's always been something that I've done. It was something that we did a lot at Dave's like um, and and so that was something that uh, I knew that I could do with the YouTube channel. So I just started making videos and started going to events because there's Bronco events all over the country. So I started going to these Bronco events and I was like, well, I'll just film them. Well, geez, like you, you know, got an incredible videographer filming your Bronco event with, you know, 50 people and all these Broncos. And I can make these things look like they're freaking epic, you know? And so like people are watching these videos, like, what? <laughs> like I was there, it didn't look like this. <laughs> and so, you know, I just started building this momentum with my YouTube channel um, and uh, ended up, you know, just I've I've put out over a hundred and something videos and um, got you know about ten thousand subscribers, which isn't a ton, but it's a lot of fun, man. And, and in this day and age with YouTube, that is a ton of true. subscribers. That's it true. really is. Like yeah. you should be really, really proud of Thank that. Thank you. Well, yeah. it just feels weird. To, what time? What year did you start your your channel? So I started my channel in 2015. It just seems so strange to me because I feel like everybody loves a first gen Bronco. It seems strange to me that nobody was out right. there doing that. Right. It's weird. 
weird. Yeah. And now what's cool is, like I said, I, I uh, quit my job at Ramsey and uh, now I'm on my own doing video production. And what's fun is the Bronco companies now are hiring me to come and shoot yes. their YouTube videos, nice. you know? So like there's another YouTube channel, Bronco Garage, and and uh, it's James Duff up in Knoxville and they will hire me uh, to film their YouTube videos. And like, you know, it's like we're working, I mean, doing stuff on my Bronco even. And it's yeah. just, it's, and, it's a lot of fun. And for our listeners, so there's probably four, maybe five like major Bronco yeah. vendors and James Duff is like the one that's been around the longest, I'm right. pretty sure. Uh, and they're they're in Tennessee, and they do all Bronco parts. Yeah. Every every generation of Bronco, I think they yeah. do a lot of Bronco two yeah. stuff, but mostly all classic Bronco. So they're like the one of the top yeah. uh, Bronco vendors. Yep, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and um, I yeah I do stuff for them. I I do stuff with Tom's Bronco parts, which they are in my parents' hometown uh, where I was born in Medford, Oregon. Um, and so it's fun. Uh, I get to go. It's a good excuse to go the, to their event every year nice. and uh, film their event and go hang out with my parents and my family comes. And, and I'm sure you've gotten some free parts out of the deal. I mean, I get I might get a discount here and there. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Have you ever driven the Bronco out there? Uh, no, but... On the down low, don't tell anyone. I'm planning a coast to coast Bronco drive yes. from. Uh, you guys are the first ones hearing this. Whoa, from I, like it hasn't even been on my YouTube channel yet. Uh, so from North Carolina to Oregon, and uh, in the Bronco, going from in April because in April there's the Bronco Super Celebration in Townsend, Tennessee, which like 600 Broncos come to. I've always wanted to go. You need to and come. I never have. You need to come. Let's do it. And then uh, in Moab, Utah, in at the end of April, there is the Bronco Safari, which is a wheeling event, and it's like epic. I mean, it's Moab, Utah is just beautiful. Yep. So um, uh, the plan is to hit those two events and do a coast to coast drive in the middle. And now it's a big caveat because my wife said, you can do it if you make money. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay. Put so it's, uh, I got to find some sponsors <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm working with some, some people to see if, uh, see if we can make it happen. So we'll see. That's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So yeah. I got a question. I was, uh, you mentioned these other Bronco guys and there's icon. Yeah. Who is just, oh, yeah. just like, one of the most premier and like they do some of the most incredible work I've ever seen um, on something I would never be able to afford. But uh, I saw you got to drive one. How oh, yeah. did that come about? Because that seems yeah. pretty awesome. So there's a company in Ohio, Classic Ford Broncos, um, which uh, they have a super generic name, but it's fitting. Um, but yeah, they make high end Broncos themselves. And so and man, their Broncos are beautiful and they do these beautiful restorations and sell them for like $250,000, mm -hmm. like super expensive. Well, Brian Rude, the owner and, and I have become friends. He uh, has a house in Nashville as well. And so they come down a lot. And so we hang out. Um, and, uh, he saw a, an icon Bronco on eBay. And so he bought it. Um, just to see like, what, what is it, you know, like what's Jonathan Moore doing? Like mm -hmm. what, you know, what is it like? So it was Bronco number five, BR five of okay. icon. So they're on like number 60 mm -hmm. now. So it was pretty, wow. pretty early on. So I was up there visiting with Brian and, and he was like, Hey, I got the icon Bronco and you want to take it no. for a drive. <laughs> And, and you're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm busy oh, today. I, just, man. I got a lot going on. I mean, it was, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Like it, it was, it was incredible. But I will say, so you've got Brian Rude, classic Ford Broncos, and then you've got Jonathan Ward icon. Icon has made a name for itself. You know, it's like epic of the epic. Yeah. But what Brian is doing with the classic Ford Broncos stuff is it is vintage. Like it doesn't, the icon feels like a brand new Bronco. Right. It's really it's a resto mod type. It, it is yeah, a resto feel. mod. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they do other, they do Land right. Cruisers. They do a ton and, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Brian's still feels like so true like an old truck. to a Bronco, yes. but it drives 
perfect and it handles perfect and it like you step on it and it is just so fun to drive. And the biggest thing was driving the Icon Bronco. No one knew it was a Bronco. I was driving around in very public areas. No one was saying, hey, no one was giving me a thumbs up. I drove the bright blue classic Ford Broncos without the top on, not an icon. And everyone's giving me a thumbs up yeah. and waving. And, you know, it's just like uh, there, there's a big two difference. Styles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was cool That's to drive cool an to icon. Them back to back. Yeah. Like that. But if I had to choose, yeah. I, I would choose the the more classic yeah. one because you know just everyone recognized They're it beautiful. and they yeah really yeah it was awesome so yeah that says a lot that you would pick uh that over the icon yeah, yeah. and the I icon know. i mean they have they're just they're super sophisticated and they they lean toward the ultra modern right. amenities and which right. is great i mean there's a market obviously for yeah. that um, yeah. but yeah the classic thumbs yeah. ups are nice to get yeah. i mean yeah. don't get me wrong i I smoked the tires in third gear on the icon. Like, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. But nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. And I was going to add too. So people are thinking like, ah, I'm not into old Broncos, you know, I, I, whatever. Your videos honestly translate to so many other applications. I mean, yeah. you know, you're changing the cam shaft out of, you know, your 302 engine. There's, I mean, the 302 has been in, I right. don't know how many cars. And so that translates into so many old, older engines and stuff. I just so, watched your like spark plug, yeah. spark plug video. I'm like, I should go do mine yep. on my Lexus. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean, it's there's something about it. Like, I guess it's the teacher in me that I just enjoy like breaking something that's complex down and explaining it. One of my videos that has actually done the the best is like it's a disc brake proportioning valve video yeah. where I'm just talking about the disc brake proportioning valve. Wow, and it's you like, never think. I know, but like when I was doing my homework on what this thing is and, you know, I knew I was going to do a video about it. And I actually was like, this is so interesting why this is helpful and how it works. And so, you know, I just did a video on how it works and it's got like 30,000 views, you know, and it's like, it just, it's very interesting that, yeah, I, I enjoy breaking stuff like that down. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not into old Broncos, which you should be, because right. they're yes, basically awesome. the coolest SUV ever. But anyways, it's still worth checking out John's videos for sure. So let's get into talking about what Ford cannot screw up with this new Bronco. I don't so. know that quite like what can they not screw up? Because in my mind, it's like, what can they screw up? There's so <laughs> yeah, many. Yeah, that's so many. what will they I'm screw so, up? I'm yeah. just so nervous yeah. because I'm so hopeful. So right. let's, let's paint a picture. Yeah. The year's 1996. The Ford Bronco is being discontinued. OJ, kill, OJ kills it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. And it was a full-size big Bronco. It, yeah, it was big a Bronco. big truck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if, just, if you're not familiar, like the Bronco 66 to 77 is the classic body Yeah, so I was going to go Bronco. through the, the generations. Yep. 78, 79 is the bullnose Bronco. is actually called the big Bronco. Yep. And then the full-size Bronco is 80 to 96. Which they actually break yeah. down into three generations, yeah. which it's, is kind of weird to me. Now, you forgot the Bronco too, okay, John? Sure, yeah. Now, look, well, that was yeah, my first okay. car. All right. right. Yep. So it's just, it has a special place. It's like, the, it's yeah. like the Mustang too, though, isn't <laughs> you know, it? No, it's just Bronco not a, two's better. You know why? I don't know, man. Yeah. Why I really love the classic Bronco. So when I had the Bronco two, and actually I went on, I would go on James Duff's website because I had this dream. I'm going to drop a V8 in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it never happened. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get an old Bronco, like a for real one. Uh, but I love the Bronco too. It was great. It it's, got an amazing gas mileage too. Yeah, it's it was a four a banger. Car. Of course, yeah. it did. it was the no, precursor. It was, a, it was a six. It oh, was a okay, two point nine V six precursor to the Explorer, the most yep. iconic SUV in yeah. history ever. Um, yeah, so we got these Broncos. It went from small, normal size truckish to the full size F one fifty ish Bronco. So Ford says and it is on their website there is at least a page on their website that acknowledges the bronco is coming back and yep. with this cult following there's massive interest in it and well and they well, did uh, what was it in 99 they did a concept 2004 bronco. 2004 they did a concept bronco which at the time i was like this is the coolest thing i've ever i've ever seen and now i look at it and i'm like eh. yeah and what's funny is like has the flashes of the icon bronco that, yeah, yeah. Original, the 2000 honestly the 2004 concept one i think still kind of holds up 
from a concept vehicle. It, it because does. When yeah. you look at a concept vehicle, you're like, okay, I know it's not going to be like this. Yep. They've just put all this like fluff on it, right? So if when I look at the 2004 one, I'm like, yeah, if well, it wasn't a concept, if it was if it was a production model, that looked pretty sweet. Because I think they used the first generation as a template, but then they tried to make it look kind of futuristic, and so. I don't know. It did. I thought. I thought it looked great at the time. So there, there's obviously been Ford has been. I think behind this a little bit. Yeah. Just kind of you know a lot in the past. So. Yeah. And there and there's two ways it can go. If you look at these retro cars, you know some have just been total flops. <sighs> some have been pretty good. Yeah. I mean. Even when Ford came back out with a Mustang, like the retro look Mustang, like it was kind of cool for a couple of years. And then it quickly just blended yeah. in with all yeah. the rest of them. Um, we've got the Dodge Challenger, like that's holding up pretty well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with the new like Hellcat coming out and all, all yeah. those are just amazing cars and the Demon. But then but, you got like the Chevy Blazer. Yeah. That oh, came that's out. That's like, uh, it, that, see, that's my fear is that yeah. it's, they're going to focus group it to yeah. death and there's it's going to be for I don't, every, I don't uh, think so. Here's I'm why hope. here's why i'm holding out for ford the ford gt yeah mm. that's one of the greatest american supercars yeah i mean since yeah the corvette that's just came the out, american the supercar. Corvette came out but b- before then it was just ford gt yeah. like and it was not a bad car in any matter and so that's where i'm holding out with ford acknowledging the yep. the culture the yep. american culture behind this bronco well, that they will put a good effort into this. Yeah, and not only that, but if you didn't know, Ford is moving completely all to SUVs and trucks, minus, I guess, the Mustang and maybe some fleet vehicles or something like that, in the U.S. market. Am I, do I have that wrong? Like no, I think I've that's correct. That I'm pretty sure that's I right. I think that's correct. Where they're phasing out, which sounds crazy. All the sedans and All stuff, the sedans, yeah. all the, the, you know, the cars that mm-hmm. we think of as, you know, two four-door sedans. Mm-hmm. They're going away in the U.S. market, and it's just going to be SUVs and trucks. Yeah. So what I've got here is a page. It's, you know, there's a thousand websites. Uh, half of these are the ones that drive you mad every April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah. They come out and I you're like, I think one eighth of the internet is just Bronco rumor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Articles. Yes. Yes. Well, for you, it's certain. So ways. I've got yeah. one that appears to be somewhat legitimate and it's called CJ Pony Parts. Yep. And that's a have, Mustang. Okay. Yeah, so they're place. pulling up like these patents that have been unveiled. So that's kind of the top of the list here, but we're just going to go through some, if you guys have anything that comes to mind where you're like, this is a must have, do you have any off, off the top of your head, John, for instance, like Ford has to do this or else they've missed the boat. Yeah. I mean, uh, for the off-road aspect of it like i feel like it has to be a solid axle i don't think it can be ifs like uh independent front suspension Mm -hmm. like it needs to be a solid axle and uh that just it really separates uh a like true off-road vehicle kind of thing you can totally do off-road stuff with uh ifs trucks but man having a solid axle it just that that's really a, a, a sweet off-road component. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, like I would say a frame off body, body where it's body on not frame. A, yeah, or body on frame. Yeah. Uh, not a unibody kind of thing. And both of those, you know, they suck with gas mileage. They suck with handling, but it just like that says something to the market of like, Hey, we're serious about this competing with the Jeep and being like an amazing vehicle, har- hearkening back to the classic heritage. Well, and that's that- what they've said. There hasn't been a lot of official uh, things that they've put out there, but I can't remember his name. He was a, a higher up at Ford and he said something to the effect of, you know, you're going to be able able to get far away from the city yeah. in this vehicle. So I think that that's kind of what they have in mind. Yeah. yeah and there's been hints at those higher up Ford guys saying that, the old classic Bronco fans will not be disappointed. I don't, right. I don't know what the direct quote is. Right. Hmm. That's a strong statement. I, it's really strong. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's so, yeah, there's so, so many unknowns. And there. what's funny, I don't know if you guys noticed, like there have been like – four exec changes since the news of the Bronco came oh, out. I have not noticed that. Yeah, like they are just kind of like rotating through, which, and, and and maybe it's more in like the product area, um, but the most recent guy, he, is, he was saying the same thing. You know, he was like, yeah, like, 
you know, we want it to be something that the classic guys really appreciate. Um, Cause he said, it, what I liked about it was he said, I forget the guy's name, but he said, you know, I, I want to honor the guys who are putting tens of thousands of dollars into their classic Broncos to fix them up. And I want those to be the guys who are buying these Broncos. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so it was like that, that, that's a strong statement yeah. to, to the, the classic guy. Well, he so. might have got me hook, line, and sinker there. Cause I'll say this if they, if they just straight up recreate the first generation Bronco <laughs> 100% and it's new and it has ABS and everything, I, I've never bought a new car. I will, I'm saying it right now. My wife is about to shake her head. I will buy a brand new 2021 Bronco. You heard right? it here, folks. Yes, That's I'll right. do it. Uh, right. I'll do it. Yes. Uh, any so, other must have. Yeah, well I was yeah. just gonna say we're all we've got to all be in agreement that Ford has got to go directly after the Wrangler market. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. they don't I agree. Because Wrangler's really the they're only They're just one, running away with it. I know. I mean, they, oh, yeah. they hold a monopoly on that. Yeah. They really do. There's nothing else like it. Mm-hmm. I don't well, think. I they, mean, but they embrace really that not. culture where this is not necessarily like a commuter's it's vehicle. It's not practical. It's not yeah. practical, I mean, but that's not care. the point of it. Right. right. Yes. And right. that's what the new Bronco needs to be, just, yes. in my opinion. I just saw my first Gladiator on the road the other day. Yep. And yep. I was like, man, that's ugly, but who cares? It's really capable. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and the guy had like a six-foot ladder sticking out of the back of the bed. But, um, anyway, so my one of mine, is this is an easy one, like round headlights. Oh, like yeah. if they didn't yeah. have that, oh, they've, yeah. they've completely. They failed. failed yeah. everything. It, the front, the front of it's got to be, got to be a little squared off. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we'll give you a little bit of contouring, all right? <laughs> but it's got to be pretty squared yeah. off. Well, the one, one of the official, I think it was official that they put out there was, um, I think it was one of the first things that Ford put out there was they had the truck and it ha- was had that drape over yeah, it, like it that, the, yeah. the blanket over it or whatever. And when I saw that, I was like, this is promising. Yeah. Like you could tell Boxy. that there, yeah, that it had that. I mean, it just had that spirit inside of it. Yep. So uh, I'm going to read some some of these points here that have been these rumors that are being released. So there's patents for uh, retractable pillars Ooh. that could possibly bridge the gap when doors are removed. Ah. So retractable do pillars. Yeah. So it's got if, if you're on the if you're listening, you're not you can't see this. But if you were to take a door off of a truck, there would obviously be a gap like on a Jeep. Well, there's these drawings of pillars that can be extended across to take uh, up that okay. space instead of like, I guess an insert you would yeah, put like, like a, a trail door. Yeah. 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 So those are some, uh, there's a plans for a split level door, a window could be removed. And that really sounds like going after yeah. that Wrangler, that Wrangler market. Well, being able to take the do- take the doors off. I mean, that's a Wrangler that's thing, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. Easily, what and, and easily honestly, is the key. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> yeah, you, you can take any door off. <laughs> the original, the classy Bronco, that was not like you couldn't just take the door right, off. You yeah. have to get you have to get special hinges now. Mm-hmm. And I'm regretting. But the that top I came off. Those. Did it come off of? All, did the top come off of all of them? Yeah. Because I know it did every, on the third gen. Every Bronco. This, okay. Yep. 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 So uh, another one here is. This says the Bronco will absolutely be based on the Ranger. Yeah, I've I've seen that from the start. Yeah, so it's going to be a Ranger that platform. Seems pretty but, so the other rumor that I've heard, which I think is hilarious, is that they are going to make a truck version of the Bronco. Well, have you oh, seen like the, that? Ugly, which I'm like, have you seen ugly. the short bed? <laughs> the like, short bed Lightning. That's like not Lightning. Uh, the not Raptor. The, yeah. Short bed well, I mean, Raptor. it's like, hey, we're we're going to base the Bronco off the Ranger truck. And then we're, we're going to make a Bronco <laughs> truck. What is the, wait, was that what you were talking about earlier, Josh? The new Jeep, uh, the Jeep yeah, truck? The Gladiator. The Gladiator. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing, I do not like that thing. Yeah, so there's, not. A, there's a rendering here of. I don't think this is a rendering, is it? They, well, no, it's a test mule. Isn't yeah. It? And they said, but it was sporting an F-150 body. But that's the Raptor, but it's yeah. a shortened Raptor. Hmm. Yeah, it says, uh, besides the simple front and rear bumpers, the shortened bed is the true indication that this is indeed not an F-150, but a test mule. Now, um, so Josh is holding up his iPad in just case <laughs> we, we got to remember that we're no, there. Are, there are other speaking. there are other test mules out there that have like, you know, the um, what's it called? Like the camouflage all yeah. over it. Yeah. And they do, they it looks like a plastic Tupperware. It looks like a Hyundai. Yeah, that yeah. thing that that freaks me That's out, awesome. man. We'll, we'll post the, the link to this article. Yeah. I mean, there's a hundred articles right. with that same picture on it. 
But this same uh, mule that we're looking at here, someone photographed the underside and it yeah. did have a solid rear axle. Right. Ooh. So, so that's right. that's what is so intriguing to me about because the body isn't super intriguing. Um, and I think they're trying to throw people off with yeah, the body. I hope they are. Uh, but what was intriguing was how much skirting they put around the yeah. underside to try mm, to, hide. to hide what's really going yeah. on. Which, Which that to me is like, yes. I agree with you that they're trying to throw people off. But then I go back to the new uh, Corvette. And when you would I see know. that thing, when it was wrapped, I was like, I can you can kind of see what yeah. they came out with underneath there. So right. I don't know. So, you know, there's. A ton to speculate on, but uh, people were saying it's going to, again, that Wrangler market, it's probably going to be priced in the thirty to thirty-two, thirty-five thousand dollars range. So on, on price, on yeah. price, I think it's going to be. It's going to be more. thirty to like ninety. It's going to have yeah. Uh, it's going to yeah. have option, right? like option yeah option because option. I mean you're going to get the you know look at so what they've what Ford has talked about is like we want to make the F series its own product and do a bunch of product lines under that uh, and then the Mustang its own product and do product lines like they want to do product lines so mm -hmm. it's going to be the Bronco and then under the Broncos stupid name bronco scout yeah, yeah because they like apparently got saying that, bought that uh bought that yeah. name yeah it's like hey let's make a ferrari that's called a lamborghini <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's just the dumbest name um but then they want to do the bronco truck which i mean it just gives me hope that there will be a bronco raptor oh so Ooh. that would oh, be man. right be sweet right. so what, what are we thinking about engines here because i'm I'm thinking they're going to throw an eco boost. Well, in that's, there. Yeah, they are, totally and that's that's rivers. something that's worrying me. All right, I know that that's kind of the future, but they're talking about eco boost and hybrid, and I have nothing against those. But in a Bronco, I've got something right. against that. I don't need that. I would love a V8. I yes, would, but like, I would love the Coyote. Like I think that's yeah. a, a beautiful motor. But the yeah, horsepower I, that the eco boosts are creating is insane. Though it's insane for what it is. Right. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, and they're um, so engine option link two point three turbocharged four cylinder eco boost. Uh, same engine that's in the current Ranger. Uh, they've also uh, talking about a hybrid option. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's going to, I think you're right. I think eventually we're going to get to see a Raptor Bronco that yeah. is full out and then the EcoBoost or some hybrid yeah. option. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see also. So there's, uh, and John mentioned this earlier with uh, classic Ford Broncos. So it's a vendor that is creating essentially new. Yeah. This is what, that's what you want, Dave. You just, you're not going to want to spend that kind of money, but that's what they do. They just basically are remaking old ones. But one of them, I don't think it was them. It's Max Slider. Was mm -hmm. that it? Yeah. And they're getting into modding the Ranger. Ford Rangers. So right. I can obviously, yeah. they're going to get into modding the new Ford Broncos. Yeah, that's yeah gonna they be, jumped on that quick. That's going to be a completely new, just like Icon does. Yeah. yeah. There's all these companies that are going to be yep. modding the new, yep. the new they, Ford Bronco. And, yeah. Big picture, if they do it right, they're keeping all of these things in mind. And look. Yep. Us sitting around this table can't feel like we're, you know, we're <laughs> we're overthinking, we're outthinking all the Ford executives. But hey, sometimes Look, it feels like that when they release yeah. cars. That's I think that saying. they should. The way that they, if I were the head of design or whoever makes these decisions, I would have handpicked people that own Broncos for the team to work on this. All right, because that's well, the, those are the people that got that's ne who needs to be making these decisions. That is, that's ultimately who's going to buy it. That is how like the Raptor came about. Really? Yeah, hmm. it was people who like wheeled you know like actually did this stuff and they were like no we have to have fox shocks yeah. under this truck and the executives were like can you do you know how much that costs <laughs> you know it was like there was this huge debate and back and forth but the designers finally won because it was like no this is what this makes is what like this is want. what people want yep. and and so yeah there's part of me that's hopeful that they'll get it and then there's part of me that's like Will they? Now, John, yeah. be, be honest with us. Did did Ford call you? No. <laughs> and I'm kind of yeah. hurt. Yeah. I know. Thank you. These guys obviously don't watch YouTube because I am yeah. the Bronco guy on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. No, they've been to a bunch of events, though, and I have talked to a couple of them at okay. different events. I know, like, being in a, around all the Ford guys because all the vendors are obviously trying to figure stuff out for 
you know, what are they going to sell in the future? Yeah. And so a couple of the vendors have already agreed like, hey, when it comes out, you know, we'll buy one and or we'll buy two and have one to, you know, kind of test stuff on and build stuff on and build stuff around. And so they're all counting on that. And so everything that I've heard from them is very hopeful. Uh, so that gives me hope. And I have heard through the grapevine that it is truly solid axle. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so is, is it going to be one of these vehicles kind of like the new uh, Supra where when it comes out, oh. Ed, there's everybody is going to be modifying them and like, you know, just oh, immediately? Sure. You think sure. so? Yeah. yeah. And but the Supra, man, that was a fail. Yes, it was. I was it? You guys I think it. so. I didn't follow I, it. I think I it was. Don't, don't even look it up. It's, yeah. it's ugly. It it's, looks like a scion. I swear. Yeah, if, it does look like a scion. If we air this episode or like if the Bronco drops like the day before we air this no. episode. Well, yes, so I was just, just going to bring that up. All summer I've been hearing 2019. Apparently, Right. That's what is, I heard. They're calling no. it a 2020 release, no. but it won't be hitting dealer lots until late 2020, and it'll count as a 2021 release. So when are they going to? That's what they're saying. When's the release coming? Do we know that? It's late 2020. Late dealer 2020. Lots is what this says. Yeah. But like, here's the thing: if you look at, uh, so I've I've looked at that most most of the time. It takes three years from when they release the rendering of what it's going to look like for it to hit the market well that's time for me to save so unless they're saying hey we're hiding the release you know or like the design from everyone if 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 they don't release it at sema this year which sema is like the biggest car show in the the country uh in vegas if they don't if there's nothing about it i don't think it'll come out in 2021 yeah i mean that's interesting i followed the corvette pretty closely and they actually I didn't see much until, you know, like they, they ran, they drove a mule through like Times Square. There was really camouflage. And at that point, we, I, I still don't think I'd seen a final rendering. And it was only a few months later that they actually released it. So I, that's true. I don't know. They, yeah, they seem to be true. pretty far along. On I don't, I don't need to know. Set. I don't need the truck yet, but I need to know what it's going to look like. That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. You need to know what it's going to cost. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stay tuned. The UK Man podcast will be a of these. I bet the releases. model that you're going to want is going to be forty five. That's how it always is. <laughs> and I, look, uh-huh. if, if it if it's what I have in my mind, then I'm going to have to find a way to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, I enjoyed this, guys. This talking about great. the new Bronco for yeah. sure. So, yeah. John, we will have you back. All right, deal. Provided you're you know got a job Anytime. in Atlanta, you can yeah. stop in. If not, we'll call you. Deal. When like it, when it when, comes when out, we got We got to yes. talk about it when yes. it actually comes out for sure. Yes. All right. We're going to take a quick break. I think it's my week. It's, it's my your week, week for the, uh, for get the segment. Prepped. So you guys get ready. We'll be back after the break. This episode is sponsored by 1776 United. 1776 United is a patriotic and historically inspired lifestyle brand. They make the best patriotic shirts and apparel on the market today. I personally own many of their products, and if you want to don patriotic gear without looking gaudy, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and at 1776united.com. guys welcome back we've got tim bringing up the segment this week what you got tim all right you know you guys thought i was just going to continue with my 80 year old is it about plants (laughs) (laughs) can we talk gardening that's that's going to be next time all right all right but this week you know most of most of the time our our bonus segments have nothing to do with the topic but i was like i've got to i've got to talk about something like that so got to this week guys you can man ford Trivia. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. Trivia. Tim's trivia is always really difficult. It's very historical. Yeah. Okay. Th- this kind of is, too. Let's do it. Now, is, so is John in on this, too? Or is oh, this, yeah. Is this me and oh, Tim? Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Okay. Now, if you guys want to... Uh, if you want to, if y'all want to keep score, I need. Well, obviously, we're keeping score. Number one, number okay. two, I need ground rules. <laughs> what are we now, doing? Name is your buzzer. So all of these are multiple choice, and you have to wait until I... Like, Ask the entire question and and all of the um, answers before you call it. You call it right. out, okay? Because that gets super annoying. Got right. it. So to let our listeners get have have them have a chance, yeah. right? Okay, but so your name is your buzzer, John. So if you know, you just say John. All right, okay. All right. That Got it. Sounds Got nothing it. like Josh. So oh <laughs> yeah, <We're good>. true. <laughs> okay, here Adam we go. Adam Carolla does Pete. All right, what year? Huh? 
what what when Adam Carolla does a, a trivia topic, he he yells Pete because it's oh, like very God. powerful. Mm, okay, yeah. okay. Here we go. You can man Ford trivia question one. What year was the Ford Motor Company founded? 1906, 1910, or 1903? Dave. Go, Dave. 1903. Ding, 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 ding. Henry Ford built his first automobile in 1896. Whoa. Wow. And in 18, I was thinking 19, it's the 1800s. 1903, he launched the Ford Motor Company. Okay, question two. In what city did Ford open its first overseas branch? Berlin, Paris, or London? John. London? No. Ah. Josh, Paris? Okay. Yes, wow. yes. Tell me. Interesting. I would think London, too. I would I, I yeah. That was my thought. I yeah. Didn't. We were from. I, I knew French. it wasn't Berlin because that would have been very. Uh, yeah, very that's weird. not going to go well <laughs> through World War yeah. One and World War Two. Yeah, 1908, the company opened a branch in Paris. Oh, eight. eight. And that uh, was the first overseas pre World War uh, One. I mean, for for forward. Wow, interesting. Okay, that's what really gave it a foothold in the European market. Wow. Hmm. Question three: How many? I've got 30 of these questions. So I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly cow. through. Them. I'm going to fly through them. Maybe we How many investors? Them. Yeah, I might. I might. <laughs> I might take out some of them. How many investors pitched in? Sorry, how many invest investors pitched in when the company was first founded? So how how many total investors did they have? Two, twelve, or twenty nine? Dave, go ahead. Two, no. Anybody John, else? go. <laughs> Twelve. John, what? Oh, oh, Josh. what think, just happened? Had, okay, whatever. Josh got it. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve investors joined oh. the venture. A uh, thousand shares were divided up between them, with Ford and Alexander Malcolm. What were their names? I don't believe <laughs> you. Get in the line here. <laughs> okay, question four. How how much cash did Henry Ford gather from his first round of investors? Nine thousand, twenty-eight thousand, or fifty-nine thousand? Josh, go. Fifty-nine thousand. Dave, go nine thousand. Eh. Oh, John, <laughs> whatever B was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty eight thousand. So then they spent yeah. most all Those of it. Twenty eight thousand yeah. to do what? To build a car? To start Ford well, to, Motor yeah, Company. to finally, Holy to cow. finally start doing his first vehicle. Okay, true or false? True or false? Ford Motor Company was the first automobile company that Henry Ford launched. True Oof. or false? Dave, false. Do you know what it was for a bonus point? I don't remember. I've heard it before. I don't know. Yes, it was false. It was called the Detroit Automobile Company. Mm. And he left there over disagreements with investors. Mm. Wow. What was the sticker price of the Model K? I never even heard of the Model K. So I was like, this is weird. $2,800, $3,200, or $4,500? John. Go. 28? Yes, $2,800. It said it was pricier than some of the other competing models, but it was also Ford's first six cylinder model. Oh, okay. So there you go. What was the first car to feature the Ford logo on an oval badge? Hmm. Model B, Model T, or Model A? Josh, Model A. Yes, 1927, wow. Model A was the first to display Ford's trademark oval badge. All right, true or false? Ford Motor Company was profitable soon after it was founded. True or false? John, false. Yes. It's true. <laughs> oh. Because the company's, uh, it, it, the concept worked. I mean, it just took yeah. off. Yeah. So Henry Ford, he was a visionary. They started making, they started breaking in those profits like right away. Mm. All right, what year did Ford introduce the moving assembly line in order to speed up production? 1908, 1910, or 1913? Josh, 1913. Yes. Wow. The moving assembly line debuted in 1913. The time needed to build the Model T's chassis dropped from nearly 13 hours to less than two Whoa. To build hours. A chassis. That's impressive, wow. but I'm going to go ahead and I got that one right because I thought of it before, before Josh, Josh said it and I got it right in my head. So, your words. Yeah. Yeah. But as you guys know, the moving assembly line transformed all yeah. of all yeah, of Yeah, I feel like we learned you learned that like early on in school. Yeah. It's yeah. An elementary okay, school. Okay, next yeah. question. In nineteen fourteen, why did Ford drastically increase worker pay in its factories? Turnover was too high, or there was rampant rampant safety issues, or workers threatened to strike. What, was, Josh, what reason? Threaten to strike. Eh. Dave, safety issues. Eh. Oh, oh, it's a turnover. John's like, we're all, 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 all stupid. I'm just getting hit by a default. You are dumb. Okay. So, so what yeah, was that reason? Tur the default. Tur turnover right. was too high. 
When I guess when they first started. Um, Wait, so employees will quit if they're not paid enough Josh. on their own? <laughs> Listen, yeah, what's capitalism does not work. Interesting. Yeah, apparently the, the work was boring. It was difficult. Mm. And what was the minimum wage many, at this time? I have no oh. idea. Like yeah right oh happen. oh i see okay. i see what you did there <laughs> see what you did josh there. settle down okay uh, but once they increased the pay and they did shorter hours people were like yeah heck well, that yeah, sounds like that. a pretty good deal yeah, yeah. Right? And, and weird it, it's weird how capitalism <laughs> works like that uh what was the first year ford manufactured more than one million cars 1920 1941 or 1955 josh 55 and this was in a year uh, or like the, the, the first year that they manufactured more than one million cars. Yeah. Way off. John, 40. No. <sighs> All right, Dave, you got 1920. The other one. Yes. <laughs> okay. I knew it. Uh, yeah, less than a one? decade after starting assembly what? line production, the company shot from 70,000 to a million cars manufactured in a single year. Dang. Crazy. He was probably rich. The, yeah. You understand this is 100 years ago. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, that's incredible. Wild. All right, what was the model... Ford Model T T T T. What was the model Ford T T? Was it an eight cylinder car, a tractor, or a pickup truck? Dave, go tractor. Eh, son of a Josh, <laughs> pickup truck. Yes, it was a pickup truck. It was introduced in 1917. It was the company's first pickup. All right, wow. so that was Long the, that was the F-150 of its day. The T-T. Model T-T. All right, what, which Ford car model was introduced for the first time in 1964? I'm not even going to give you options, guys. If you guys don't get this, okay. come on. Josh. Mustang. Mustang. Yes, yeah. yes, okay, sorry. <laughs> Good, we don't have to go over that one. All right. 64 and a half, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, how did Ford treat veterans returning from World War One? <laughs> <laughs> hey, horribly. <laughs> a, oh, it hired disabled veterans. Two, it refused to hire war veterans. Or three, it paid veterans a cash reward to seek employment elsewhere. Wow. Oh, interesting. I hope that's not it. <laughs> this is World War One. World War One. Oh. They go. employed disabled yeah. veterans. Yes, they okay. did. They, really? They did the right thing. Yeah, they not only hired disabled veterans, but um, they also made sure the work environments were accommodating to their special needs. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. All right. Good for Ford. I'm going to skip a few of these because I still got some more. Yes. Good, good clap there. Slow there. clap. All right. In Europe, which model replaced the Ford Escort? So kind of like a newer question oh. here. Uh, the Pinto? The Focus or the Fiesta? John. Dave. No, this is in Europe. This is in Europe. John, what, John got it first. Okay. B, the Focus. No. Or the, uh, it's the, what was the B? What, what was B? Uh, B was Focus. Oh, yeah. No. Dave. No. The Fiesta. Yeah. <gasps> it was a Fiesta. What year? Sorry. 1998. Okay. Yeah, 1998. I don't know why uh, I knew that. The Focus replaced the Escort model, which had worn out it, its work. I think it's because they were so Escort. ugly, Ford, uh, that it just stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. What did the company introduce in 1932? The Model A, the Flathead V8 engine, or the Mercury brand? 1932, guys. 32. 32. Just guess. Go, go, go. go. Yes, that's right. Ah. Flathead V8 engine. It was reliable and powerful, making it one of the most popular engines for decades to come. I mean, that was, yeah, they, they produced that forever. What All number right. are we on? Uh, well, I skipped ahead. So we got, uh, I don't know, five, six more left. How how much money did the company lose in 2006? About $45 billion, oh, about $13 billion, or about $4 billion? In 30, oh, sorry, what year? Uh, 2006. So this is kind of newer. The middle one. Okay, yes, about $13 <laughs> billion. <laughs> Uh, it says to, to stem the bleeding, Ford sold Land Rover and Jaguar oh. and focused but on its core brands. But they didn't get a bailout, right? They didn't. They so did they're, not. I heard this recently. Oh. I hope I'm going to get this right. Uh, there are two company, two car companies, only two that have never gone bankrupt. Really? Ford and Tesla. Huh. Interesting. Well, yeah. Tesla's time's coming. but uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think if it hadn't come, well, whatever. We'll yeah. see. I mean, talk about government intervention there, though. Yeah. Right? Yep. Anyways, okay, which yeah, Ford family member? Timely. All right, so uh, Ford family member commissioned most of the important works of art in the city of Detroit. Henry Ford, Edsel Ford, or Henry Ford II? Edsel Ford. That's right. You didn't say wow. your name, so that doesn't count. <laughs> Josh. 
Uh, yeah, Edsel for commission, the Detroit Industry Murals. I have not seen these. Have you guys seen no. any pictures nope. of this? Apparently, it's a, a national landmark. Hmm. All right. Here we go. Getting down to the wire here. 2015 F-150 truck was overhauled to feature more of which material? You guys have got to get this. What year? Sorry. Uh, 2015. 2015. Pay attention. Sorry, guys. Was it more steel, more aluminum, or more Kevlar? Hmm. C, Kevlar. Really? Right. Oh, Dave, it's aluminum. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, the aluminum frame and chassis or something. Yeah, which like, body guys I think are hating or something because, yeah. you know, the durability or something right. about it. I don't know. And it's super expensive to replace these because I think you just you just kind of have to replace the whole body panel if you get a, a pretty major. Yeah, it was a lot lighter. I think weld. it was all about the, the fuel economy. I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Right all right. But. F-Series trucks. What year? 1961, 55 or 48? So when did they first start the F-Series? Um, I'm going to say 55. 61. Eh, eh, 48. 48. Oh, I know. Wow. That was like super I early. I did not know yeah. my Ford history. I thought for sure that it was. <laughs> I knew a 55 existed. I didn't know. I thought it was 61. That. But yeah, that's when they did it, right after World War II. So mm. uh, which brand did Ford get rid of in 2011? I think you guys will know this. Mercury, Lincoln, or Jeep? Uh, Lincoln, Josh. And eh, Mercury. Mercury, they dumped the Mercury. Oh, Lincoln's still a thing. Yeah, yeah. think okay, like the Grand Marquis Mercury, <laughs> yeah. so they finally dumped that. Wait a okay. minute, the, did you say Jeep? That's what threw me. I know, well, they never dumped it because they never owned it. Yeah, I was like, did Jeep? Did Ford <laughs> All right, Jeep? two more questions because we're running out of time here. Which Ford car helped to revolutionary revolutionize car styling in the 1980s? Was it the Telstar, the Taurus, or the Puma? B, Taurus. Yes, yes. It was a Taurus. That thing was a mainstay, right? Yeah, I was, was there trying forever. to envision the 80s Taurus. Oh, I remember it. was it. just ugly. Yeah, ugly. Every car was But like, at the well, time, it was it, it was, was like, whoa, what is this thing? If you look at the 2003 Lexus in my driveway, it still has that just generic sedan yep. vitamin. Yeah, look. that was a Taurus. Yeah. Okay, last question. This is just this is just basically a freebie, okay, guys. All if right. you guys don't get this, then we just gotta we just gotta pack up and just All go right. home, okay? <laughs> All right. Which model a was Ford Bronco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which model was discontinued in 1996? And we already talked about it. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, but Bronco. I, you know what? I had a I had a trivia from a previous episode where you guys didn't get it, and it was about the Ford Bronco. So I'm going to ask you again, John. You oh, you can't answer. Okay. Right? What year did Ford first produce the Ford Bronco? Dave, 1966. Yes, finally. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Got it. Classic Broncos, 66 to 77. Yep. All right. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week with their Bronco Talk. John, thank you so much for making the drive down from Nashville. Thank you for having me. And actually, do you want to give a little plug on yeah, how people can uh, find you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nashville Early Bronco on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube's where most of the action happens. And then Instagram is second. You know. And John's video quality is good. Like there's so yes. much stuff that's like iPhone looking like, hey, watch me, watch yeah. me fix these brake pads. He's not rolling like, like that. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to get a headache watching the yeah. you know the guy with the shaky camera <laughs> yeah. everywhere. So John, can you videos. see that? I'm holding it up. I, I don't know if you guys can see it's it. Not focus, I can see it's it. not focusing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I do get the comment. Uh, hate the music a lot. <laughs> oh, so, you know, that's <laughs> work on that. Caution on that one. I don't do country. I don't do yeah. redneck rock. And you've got some really <laughs> sweet. I'm actually wearing one right now. Really yep. sweet T-shirt. That is yeah. a good. Yeah, thing. I like sure. the branding. I Thank love you. the look of everything. You've done a really good job with that so you can buy your own t-shirt yeah, at nationalearlybronco.com that's right yeah that's right john thank you so much for being on the thanks, show with guys. us all right guys as always thanks so much for tuning in and you can check out our show notes at youcanman.com check out our instagram page and our fairly new facebook group page we've had a lot of interaction there so definitely check that out as well we'll catch you next time beep, 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 beep.